Hi there, it's David Young, the Resourceful Coach, and we're here on the third hole of Corinthians. And what we're going to do today, just something a little bit different, we're going to look at six different shots around this green. So golfers always say you never get the same two games day after day. You end up in different positions. So we're going to show you to this particular flag that we've got here today, six different places I might have ended up in and show you how to play the different shots. And the key thing we're going to do, we're going to look at each shot, break down what we think is the best option, and that's determined by the lie, the amount of green we've got to work with and the slope that we're playing on, okay, and what's in our way. So really important just to take each shot as a separate challenge. What I tend to see a lot of people is they only start to have maybe one choice of shot. And what we're going to show you here, these six different shots, we could play them in six completely different ways. And what I need to know is have you got the skills to have six different shots around the green? If you haven't, there may be a situation where you get a lie and suddenly now you think, well, I actually don't know how to do it or you don't execute it as well as you'd like to. So hopefully we'll go through these shots, have a bit of fun with them, look at the options of what we're going to do. So we'll talk you through each shot and why we're choosing this particular club to play that shot and why that will work better than others. OK, so here's our first shot. We've, we've sort of played this particular hole. We're going to play one later. We're going to come over the little pond. There's a little pond in front of the green here and I've come over the pond. I've missed the green coming into the green to the left. And you can see from the lie it's sitting down a little bit in the grass. I've only missed. I mean, I'm literally a foot away from being on the fringe and it would have been a really good shot. I could have probably putted it from here, but it changes the whole shot. Now, the ball is sitting down in the grass quite a bit. So the most important thing I've got to do is get it up and out of that grass. That's the important thing I'm looking at. So that's the first thing I realized. Look at the lie. I need to get it up and out of the lie. Second thing, then start to look at what's in front of us. OK, course is kept in lovely condition. But because we've we water the greens quite nicely, this is quite thick and fluffy, the fringe. So it sort of could get held up in that, which obviously we don't want to do. And then we've got the green. So how much green have we got to work with? Well, we've got approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paces. So eight paces, about 20 feet. So now it's looking at the options. What can I do in this position? And actually from that lie, which isn't very good, what would I be happy with as a result? And I think that's the important thing, is look at what's a good result. And from my data, if you're in the rough from here, even as a scratch golfer, if I get this ball down from that lie in probably I get it down in two, one in five, I've probably had a good day. OK, so four out of five, I'm going to get down in three. So what I don't want to be is too cute with this and get into a situation where I try and play the perfect shot and end up maybe not getting on the green and taking three to get down from there. So I end up taking four to get down from this position. So what I look at a lot of the time on this is look at the whole picture of the shot. I look at the green and I think, oh, I've got a bit of green behind. I've probably got 50 feet of green behind, 40 feet of green behind. So the one thing I want to do is make sure I get this up and out of that lie and I get a chance to get the result. Now, I'm confident using something with a bit of loft in this shot. And the reason why I would use that is because it's sitting down so much in the grass, I want to get into the bottom of the ball. And with that loft, then it's going to help the ball get up and out of that grass as quick as possible. We'll show you with some of the other lies. I don't need to do that. I might play the ball a little bit more of a running shot. OK, but in this case, I want to get right down to the bottom of the ball. So most important thing is everything I'm doing here. One of my um, sort of short videos I did shows you the weight of the club. If you just let that drop into the grass, it will get there. But I want to make sure I'm going to hit down into that ball. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to make sure that I play this ball a little bit back in my stance. And what that's going to encourage is a little bit steeper swing to get down into the grass, but also it's going to miss a lot of the grass behind. So there's less grass between me and the ball. OK, it's a shot you've got to practice. It's a shot I've done plenty of times. As I said, what would I be happy with as a result here from this lie? I'll take three. The lie dictates what I can do. If I get up and down in two, bonus. So you can see not a powerful shot. I'm not standing here trying to get power and I don't want to just skim the grass. I've got to get to the bottom of that ball. That's the big thing. So from there, playing off my back foot slightly, leaning a little bit forwards. I want that club to go up, to come down, to pop onto the green. And that came out as well as I would like it to. I've ended up about four and a half feet underneath the hole. So not a great lie, sitting down in the rough. But we've shown you from that lie. Play it slightly back in your stance. Don't be scared to have a go with a bit of loft. And as long as you let that club reach the bottom of the ball, it's got a chance to come out. We've got a good result there. I've probably now played that a little bit better than average, so I'm happy with that result. 
But let's look at some other shots what we can do around the green. And as I said, we're playing the same green, same flag, but would we play different shots to these flags? So I've come to my second shot. Um, just gone a little bit further up the green. You can see how it now looks a little bit different. You can see what we're talking about, the pond in front of the green and what we've got. And we've just come off the back of the green. One of those shots, maybe another day, might have rolled back down onto the green and we've had a chance, but it hasn't done that. So but let's look at the options of what we've got as we go through this shot. So ball here, sitting in this position. I'm just off the edge of the green. I've only got, what, two paces and I'm onto the green. Then we're onto a green and maybe the camera doesn't show, but hopefully you'll see as I walk down. There's a tier here and I'm dropping down into the green from that tier onto the green. So there's quite a big drop coming down onto it. So everything here is sort of saying to me, look, the ball wants to move forwards. So what I get a lot of people do here, they, they think, oh, I should be using a pitching wedge or a sand wedge for this shot. But everything on this shot is downhill. So if I try and get this ball up in the air a lot, it's going to hit the downhill slope and it could shoot. So this is a shot really we want to look at and think, how do I keep the ball on the ground? And because the grass here, because it's the high point of the green, unlike the first shot where the grass was quite thick around where the water had been held um, from the watering system, this is quite thin. So that's the thing to look at. You suddenly look at it, just because I'm off the green doesn't mean I need to chip it. To be honest, my best option here would be a putter. I think from this, because it's all downhill and because I've got that slope, I just want to take a putter from this position. So nothing in my way, grass is quite short because of the fact we've got summer conditions and the water isn't staying in this position. Putter's a good option. Other option, if you're not a fan of putting from off the edge of the green, use something like a, a, a seven or an eight iron and just pop the ball forward just to get over that. But what I'm fearful of on this shot, even landing it here, I can feel it in my feet dropping down onto the green. It's gonna hit that downslope shoot and now that brings the water into play. If I'm just a little bit clumsy here, so severely down that hill, even though the water's probably 40 feet the other side of the flag, I get a little bit clumsy, I could be in trouble. So again, just think it through, think the shot through, get clarity in your mind, you know how important that is to me, get consistency, and now read it like a putt. That's the important thing. Make sure now you're reading it like you would read a putt, even though you're just off the edge of the green. Green here suggests to me that this slope, big bank, I need to get it out here, and once I get it out here, it's going to drop down towards the hole. Be very happy if I get down in two. Anytime I'm not on the green and I get down in two, I'm very, very happy. So let's see if we, this is the right choice of shot. Putter, get your angles going with the slope. Start it out to the left. Just let it drop over the top of the hill. There. Over the top of the hill. It's running down. Got a chance. Well... I'm happy with that because I chose the right club. I kept it simple. I kept the ball on the ground. I've rolled that down within nine inches of the hole. Okay, we're probably gonna get some shots a little bit more challenging than that as we go around these other shots, but I'm very happy with that result. So I've come to our third shot, and this is quite a common shot I see the members get into here at Corinthians on the third. Because of the pond, they tend to be a little bit more keen to get the ball over the water and can very easily end up at the back of the green. So a little bit more severe than the one we had before we were able to putt it. Now I've come up the bank, I'm nearly onto the fourth tee box. I'm not quite on it, but I'm on this bank. And now I've got around about, what have we got? One, two, three feet, of, uh, sorry, three paces of quite thickish, indifferent grass. Then we're onto the nice apron of about five paces. And then we're onto this green. But as you can see, I'm walking down. Everything's very much pushing me down this hill. It's quite a severe hill. So it's really important. This is the big thing for me with golfers understand how the ball's going to react. This is all going to land on a downhill slope, whatever it is. I can't putt it through that, that lie because it's too thick. I just want to get it onto this, but it's going to hit that downslope. It's going to run. Now, the other thing that I need to do, because we're on such a severe downslope, the slope is sort of going this way. I've got to get my angles correct with it. And what I'd like to be able to play from here, if I can, probably just to pop it onto the edge there, would probably be just something like a nine iron. But here's the clever bit. I've brought three clubs. I've brought my nine iron, but I've brought also my gap wedge and my lob wedge. Now, why have I brought these other two clubs? And the reason I want you to think about that is if you're playing your nine iron, let's use my arm just to explain this. If you're playing your nine iron from a, a normal lie, that's the loft you're going to get. But as soon as we do that, it's going to turn into more like a seven or a six iron. So if I do that on this slope, it's gone. Ball's gone. So nine iron now is no good. So now I look at it and think, right, what did I have there loft wise? If I add about 10 degrees of loft, there's my gap wedge from there's more loft than I need, but I do that. It now becomes a nine iron. 
And if the slope was even more severe, I might go even to a, a, a lob wedge. So now we're looking at that feeling that what I've done here, I've chosen my gap wedge, my 52 degree, it's gonna become like a nine iron and now I've got to use my imagination. We know everything's gonna run down that hill quickly. I literally only have to chip this ball probably six to eight feet in front of me and yet the hole we're looking at around about 30, 40 yards away from me. Gravity's my best mate here. It's gonna run the ball down towards that hole. So again, awkward lie, like I said on my first chip, I get this down in three, I'm very happy. Get my angles with the slope, just get the feel of what I'm doing. Again, just sense the arms hanging there to just let that come back down nicely into the bottom of the ball. I just wanna pop it, as I said, just over this rough grass. And then the momentum of the slope should take me down to the hole. Anything really, I'll be honest, anything inside 15 feet, I'm very happy with. Popped it forward, we're onto the green. Hits that tier, it's running down. And I've probably ended up about 10 feet away and a good chance. And, it, and the nice thing is because I hit it correctly, it's just run down, I've just gone past how I'm gonna have a little bit of an uphill putt. So look at all the situation. You can see the slope there, what we've taught you here, big severe slope, go with the slope. It's gonna give you a better contact, but now change the club, go more lofted to suit the club that you want. If you are a player who'd like to play this with a wedge, use a sand wedge because it will become a pitching wedge. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Let's have a look at our fourth shot, a little bit more straightforward shot, the next one, where we're just playing really just a chip across the green. So as I said, our fourth shot is a little bit more straightforward, not so many banks and slopes to worry about. So just a chip across the green. We've missed the green, come over the water a little bit right. We've ended up around about one, two, three, four, five paces off the green. Again, this area of the grass, because it's nicely watered, it's a little bit fluffy. I don't really want to putt it through this, but I now do what I call my two-step rule. My two-step rule is simply, I want to land that ball, if I can, at least two steps onto the green. Now, why do I do this? This is really important because the surface of the golf course that's the best is the green. So I'd expect the best consistent bounce in this position. Now, that doesn't mean you've got to land it just two paces on. If you want to land it three, four, five, again, absolutely fine, but a minimum of two paces, that's my two-step rule. Please go and have a look at that video. So what have we got? What am I looking at here? I've got a roundabout. When we get to this, we can see, because we chipped from the other side, we said we had about 40 foot of green to play with here. And then the other side of the hole, we've got that 15, 20 feet to play with on the other side. Do I need to hit this high? Well, there's nothing really in my way. So the answer there is no. The, the lie is good. Some of you might want to putt this. Some of you might think, well, I'll just take an eight iron and pop it onto the green. For me, I use my gap wedge quite a lot around the greens. That's just my club that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna use that club. And because of that, it takes me probably about three or four paces onto the green, which is nice. It gives me that feel. Again, I'm not looking to sort of get big elevation. I just wanna use the loft of the club. So again, my chipping, I tend to let my arms hang. I want the ball a little bit back in my stance and I just wanna pop the ball forward. The shot from the other side of the green, which was our first shot, moved a little bit from the other side there, left to right. So this will move a little bit right to left. It's a shot for me as a professional golfer. I'd like to get this ball close enough to think I can get this up and down in two. But if I'm honest, it's probably a 50-50 chance. 50% 50 of the time I will, 50% of the time I won't. Let's see what we get. So learnt from the one the other side, it's come down. It's run on a little bit, probably about five, six feet past. So I'm quite happy with that. That's about my 50-50 range if I'm gonna two putt it from there or one putt it from that position. So I've hit the shots, probably on average, that's about an average shot. So that was a more straightforward one. We're gonna give you one now from a similar sort of angle, but we're gonna play out of slightly thicker grass and a lot more grass to go over and see how we can play that one. So our fifth shot really are now on this particular hole. I mean, if you can see it on the camera, we've got a similar lie to what we had on the last, but I'm a good 25 yards further this way, slightly in different grass, which will we'll show you that lie. And then what we've got is a situation now, we've got the same amount of green to work with, but the biggest thing I've got to do here is I've really got to get it over this grass. It's probably only depth of it, about an inch deep at this grass, but it's enough to sort of, if I land in it, it's going to, sort of going to kill the ball. It's not going to run on. So this is probably my first shot that we're looking at. I need to go with a bit more loft. I need to get that elevation. The first shot, which again, sitting down in the grass, we took a sandwich, but it wasn't a particularly long shot. But this one now, I want to get elevation. I'd like to use my two-step rule. I want to land this ball on the green. So I've been coming out with my three clubs, my nine iron, my gap wedge, and now I've got my lob wedge. And I'm 
happy to give this a go. And I think golfers are scared of this. They look at it and they go, I don't want to play it, but I'm not actually going to change my technique too much. Look at my other videos. It shows you that. I want to make the ball go forwards, but I've got 60 degrees of loft here. That's what's going to put the ball up in the air. Not me. So very easy on this shot. I think, oh, I've got to elevate it there. And the two shots we see is people just knock it along the ground about six feet or they thin it over the other side. Now, again, it's a little bit lap of the gods, the lie here. I've got a little bit of grass there. Let's just get rid of that. It may not come out of this lie as I night because it is just sitting down in that inch of grass. But you've got to commit. You've got to make a decision. So what I do on these shots a lot of the time is, especially these ones, because it's not one I'm used to doing a lot of, is I'll do a few practice swings just to rehearse the feeling. I think if you watch a tour player when he has these shots around the green, he'll probably do one practice swing on the tee, but he does five or six for this shot because he's got to feel what he's doing. He wants to sense how that club's going to go through the grass and come out. And now I just visualize my spot. Trust what I've learned previously. As I said, I play my shots a little bit towards my back foot, strike down on the ball, make it jump up. There's the elevation. We've landed it two paces on. Yeah, I mean, that's a shot I'm going to take very, very happy. I've probably ended up about five, six feet away from this position. It's definitely like the first shot. If I get down in three, I'm okay with that. Okay, it was really the second shot that put me in this bad position, but I've now given myself probably a 50% chance that I could get out of here still with my par. So you can see the different shots we're playing. If the shot needs it, play with that one a little bit of loft. The last one, definitely got to play some loft because I've got to come over the edge of the pond. So I've come to our sixth shot. The shot we've got to go over the pond. As I said, the pond is on this hole, makes it a little bit tricky. But as I said, we've given ourselves six different positions that we come to. Why I'm standing this side of the pond, I think this is really important. What you'll see from the camera angle there, it looks like I've probably only got about 10, 15 feet of green to play with, and everything gets a little bit foreshortened. It's a little bit like me saying to you, how long's this golf club? But if I turn it that way, you can see exactly how long it is. So sometimes what you need to, worst case scenario, at least walk up level with the green and look from a side angle to see how much green there is. But we're gonna pace this out. We're gonna have a look at it, see what we've got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 paces up to that green, up to that hole, sorry. So we're talking about nearly 40 feet of green. So we've got plenty of green to work with. So let's come back around, have a look at the shot. And now mentally, I think I've got a load of green to work with. So that can make a decision really on the choice of club that I'm going to pick when I play this shot. And it's down to your preference, okay? Again, we look at it. We still use our two shot rule, but again, I look at it from here, it probably looks like I've got half that amount of green. And it's very, very easy then to try and be cute and you end up in the water. So the most important thing, make sure you look at the shot, look at what you've got. Think where we played the second shot from, which was directly the other side of the hole. Okay, that was all downhill. So we know if we go up to the, the flag there and go probably even 15 feet past, the tier is waiting for the ball. So even if I'm a little bit firm, that tier will stop my ball. The greens here, probably average speed. So even coming down that green, it's not going to be lightning quick, the putt. So the key thing now is from that lie, which is sort of okay, we'll get a picture of that so we can show you that and we'll show you what that lie looks like. It's okay, but I want to make sure I've got enough loft to get over that. So I said, I like to chip with my gap wedge. That's the club I'm going to use. I think with 40 feet of green to play with, I can get the ball to land at least probably four or five paces onto the green and then get the ball to stop. So that's my picture. I've got that image in my mind, what I'm going to do. And now I've just got to trust myself to go through with that idea, get a clear picture. Ball seem to be moving that way. So I'm going to aim a little bit right of the hole, see if it will rundle down. Again, down in two, going to be very, very happy. Struck it nicely. And I seem to be leaving myself around that four or five foot putt. So if you look at my shots today, I've given myself a good opportunity. I've had one around about 10 feet. I had that one down the hill that stopped stone dead, but the other's five, six feet away. I'm probably gonna have a day today where I've probably got half of these up and down, which from these six positions, as a professional golfer, I'm gonna take all day long. But the important thing to understand is look at the different shots that you've got in front of you and don't just go in with a one idea. You've seen there, I've played six different types of shot, might be slightly different variations of similar things, but you can see the idea, whether I've putted from off the edge of the green, had to get a lob wedge in there, or whether I've used my gap wedge, or because the slope was what it was, I then went a little bit more lofted to make it into a different club. 
use your imagination. When you look at the top players, the great players around the green over the years, like Seve and Phil Mickelson, that's what they've got. Great imagination. If you do it, you'll be surprised. Those six different shots, you can start playing them the way I did. I hope you enjoyed those six different shots today. I enjoyed playing them for you. Look forward to seeing you soon. If you did enjoy it, share this video with your friends. Thank you. Thank you.